Hello. This video is going to be about the Young Laplace equation. The Young Laplace equation is an equation to find the pressure difference between two fluid phases at their interface. We've described interfacial tension. Now we're going to talk about why there is a pressure difference between those phases. Now to show that, I'm going to take a simple experiment. Here's just a piece of uh, kitchen paper. Okay, this kitchen paper is in fact a porous medium in that it's a fibrous material with holes and the purpose of it is that it soaks up water. So water has an attraction for the fibrous materials. Air, in, in contrast, doesn't particularly want to be in the porous medium. So there's a natural affinity to water to be in the porous medium. Okay, fair enough, we know this, but why a pressure difference? So what I have here is I'm not going to hopefully make a real spill, but here we have a glass of water. Now what I'm gonna do very carefully is I'm just gonna dip the edge of this into the water carefully like this. And then as you look, right, you can begin to see that water rises up. Okay, there you can see it a bit more clearly. You can see that the water rises up, okay, above the level of the glass. Okay, so if we wait for a bit, okay, so the water is soaking in to this tissue paper, but it's not soaking in because I've just dunked it in the water. You see that water has moved up in the tissue paper above where I put it in the water. So if we look at it now, okay, that's a little bit clearer now. You can see here that I've dipped it in the water here, but there's a couple of centimeters where the water has moved above the level that it was in the glass. Okay, fair enough. What does this mean in terms of pressure? Well, what's the pressure in the air? That's atmospheric pressure. Now, you know, if you're in a swimming pool or in the sea, or even in looking at water underground, pressure increases with depth as rho gh, density times the gravitational acceleration times height. So as you go down, the pressure increases. But what's happened to the water here, it's gone up, okay? It's gone up. So if it's gone up, that's a lower pressure. So in fact, the water, right, the water here, is at a lower pressure than atmospheric because it's atmospheric pressure here when it's in contact with the, directly in contact with the air outside the porous medium. In fact, the, air, the water's at lower pressure, the air is at higher pressure. And that makes physical sense because the water likes being in the pores medium. So where the water is in contact with the air, we can't see it in here, but where it is in contact with the air, at that interface, there will be a curved interface. The water wants to be attracted to the um, fibers of this material, and the water will be at a lower pressure. So what I'm going to do is then talk about this in a little bit more detail with some equations, and then later we'll show some pictures of what fluids really look like when they're configured in a porous medium. So to do that, we're going to look at some slides. So here we have the Young-Laplace equation, which is what I'm showing here. So the Young-Laplace equation comes from an energy balance where there is a displacement. So one phase displaces another in this particular example, it was water displacing air and there is a pressure okay um, and there is a pressure difference between the phases so we look here the non-wetting phase the phase that doesn't particularly like the material um, air in our example we'll give the, the the subscript mw and the pressure in the wetting phase so there's this pressure difference between the phases and this pressure difference is called the capillary pressure so now we'll do an energy balance so if we have work done with a pressure difference, um, that's PDV, that's the work, and that's the energy that's put into the system. And in putting in this work, you've created interfaces between the phases. And we just said there is an energy associated with an interface, in this case, between air and water or oil and water, and that has an interfacial tension, energy per unit area of sigma. So the energy of that interface is sigma dA. And we'll just assume a very small change in volume, very small change in area. So very simply, 
we find that the capillary pressure, this pressure difference, is now sigma times the change in area, the change in volume, the dA dV. More or less is the young Laplace equation. It's just a conservation of energy at constant pressure. And you can evaluate it for simple geometry. So let's, let's do that. Let's start um, with a sphere. Okay, so this is the simplest we can do. Okay, so if we have a sphere, the area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, where r is the radius. Its volume is 4 pi r cubed. So dA dV, just um, from the chain rule, is dA dr times divided by dV dr. Now dA dr, right, is uh, 8 pi r. Okay, that's the 8 because it's that 2. Um, dV dr, right, is 4 pi r squared. It's actually the same as the area, right, because the, the 3 goes because it's pi d. So it's 4 pi r squared. So the capillary pressure, which is dA dV times sigma, there's a power of 2. There's two sorry, not a power of 2, there's a factor of 2. 2 sigma over r. So the capillary pressure for an interface that is spherical. So if you imagine um, one phase displacing another, and you have an interface between them that has the shape of a sphere, okay, then the pressure difference between them will be two sigma divided by the radius of curvature of that sphere. We can do this for a cylinder. I'll leave that as an exercise uh, for you. But in general, the shape is a little bit more complex. There is an interface between two phases in a porous medium. We're going to describe that in much more detail later. But there is an interface, and this interface will be curved. And there is, there are two radii of curvature called the principal radii of curvature. So, so it's illustrated on the diagram here. If we have some surface, at any point, you can describe a circle that just fits on that surface. Okay, and that's the radius of curvature. And the two principal radii of curvature are packed where you cut a surface in two perpendicular directions. And look at the radius of curvature. So just give an example, all right? Here's a, here's a vase, okay? There's nothing special about this, but you could imagine that this was a, an interface between two fluids. There's clearly a radius of curvature because the vase curves around like this. But then there's another curvature in, in a perpendicular direction that's like this. And the interesting thing is that these two radii of curvature Different. So talk about that a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Okay. So now here we have a derivation of the young Laplace equation. Okay. Um, I'm just going to move this across. Okay. So derivation of the young Laplace equation. So what we're going to imagine here is that we have an interface between the phases. And they're subtended, it's just a little piece of interface, subtended by a small angle. But of course, this is a solid angle. So in two perpendicular directions, it's alpha and beta. So the area of the interface here, okay, the area of the interface here is just the two radii of curvature, R1, R2, times those angles, alpha, beta, R1, R2. That's just true of any small interface. Right? Those are the radii of curvature. You think about it in uh, just the arc of a circle, it's the angle times the radius. In, um, if you're taking a two-dimensional interface, it's just the two angles times the, the two radii. Okay. We're now going to consider a displacement so that, that there's a small movement in that interface. And so the area times plus the change in area is going to be alpha beta times R1 plus dr plus R2 plus dr. And these are just two small incremental changes in radius, and we'll consider those two to be equal. Okay, so the change in area is just alpha beta um, r1 plus r2 times dr. The terms, the dr squared term, we're going to ignore because this is a small change. And this is a change we're talking about. The change in volume is simply the volume between those two interfaces, right? moved slightly. It's just a little slither here, okay? It has a length of dr and then the it times the area. So it's alpha beta r1 r2 times. So dA dV, okay, is just actually the, the, the one divided by the other. So I can show it here. And um, the alpha, beta, and the dRs all cancel. And we're left with this one over R1 plus one over R2. A relatively simple algebra. So the capillary pressure, okay, is sigma times this. So it's sigma one over R1 plus one over R2. 
And this can be written actually in terms of a curvature, you have a curvature kappa, which is just defined as one over one radius of curvature plus one over the other radius of curvature, because the units of one over one. So kappa is the total curvature. This is the capillary pressure. This is the young Laplace equation. Okay. It is a bit of geometry with uh, curved surfaces, so it can be it look a little bit obscure. It is fundamentally simply an energy balance. So what we can do is we can then um, look at different shapes, okay, in terms of an energy balance, um, which we talked about before. So when we're considering an interface, you can have an interface between two phases that can have two different curvatures. And in fact, these radii of curvatures, rather well, strangely, can have different signs, so they don't necessarily have to be positive. And the reason for thinking about it is back to this vase. We have one curvature here. Okay, you can imagine that's positive, something bulging out. So you can imagine this is air or oil bulging out into the water. Okay. But then we have another curvature here that's actually in the opposite direction. Okay, and then it's curving in. So these two radials of, radial of curvature actually would have opposite signs. Okay. They'd have opposite signs. Right? They tend to cancel. As opposed to something that's more spherical, a ball shape, where the radial of curvature are the same. Okay, and they're both the same sign, or they're both positive on the same sign. Okay, so I think we'll, we'll end here. I haven't introduced a porous medium though, I'm just looking at an interface more or less, it seems like in free space. And the next thing is to introduce a solid surface and the constraints that then that solid surface impose on the paper.